right, we are here at Sebring, and we wanted to come and look at an aircraft that I've been aware of because I've admired this particular gyroplane in Europe for a few years, but we haven't seen much or hardly any of it in the United States. Obviously, that's different now because there's quite a little collection of it here. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking with Chris Lord, who is the new representative of the ELA Gyro Company. Chris, I want you to tell me just a, a couple of words about your company to get the sure. name established for people. Sure. So then I want you to talk a little bit about ELA in Spain. Sounds excellent, Dan. Uh, my company is called Pictao Aerospace. We kind of changed our website to Gyroplane Guy because most people recognize me as a Gyroplane Guy. Um, we're located here in Sebring. We used to be in Illinois, moved down here where the weather's nice. Ah, okay, time. where were you in Illinois? A northwest corner, Galena, Illinois. Ah, Galena, I know so, that. I used to be a Chicago guy. So. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and the weather yep. up there as well, it's not as good as it is here. It's not as easy to fly every day <laughs> as it is here. We'll, we'll definitely give you that one. Yeah, you got some great summer months, but then there's those other months. Yeah, we definitely get the seasons. Uh, so that's our company. We just moved down here a couple weeks ago, set up a uh, shop here. Uh, we'll be importing the ELAs here and uh, looking to do a build assist center, training here, all the other things that go with that as well. Now, when you say here, you mean here, here. Here, here, right, right on this airport. Sebring. Yes, all sir. Right, so. Yes, sir. We're just set up here with a commercial hangar, so we have a, a 4,500 square foot, great training facility, and a good place to uh, build machines. Yeah. All right, so you're going to be right here at Sebring uh -uh. with, uh, and say the name of your company, Picteo, did you say? Picteo Aerospace. Where, where does the name Picteo <laughs> come from? i got to ask. Well, uh, I started to get into gyroplanes because of LiDAR, actually. So I started the company Picteo, which was picture, and it was a made-up word, so I wanted people to ask what it was. And then uh, it kind of became well, a it curse. it obviously works. It, it, <laughs> it works, but it kind of became a curse because nobody can spell it. So, ah, well, there um, you go. And so. then we did Picteo Aerospace, who actually owns the, the aircraft and does the training. And then, I see, uh, okay. And then switch to gyroplaneguy.com because that's easier. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about ELA, which is a Spanish company. and Fill in some blanks for me. Yep, uh, ELA has been in business for 20 years. They've uh, manufactured gyroplanes for 20 years, actually. So they are one of the older gyroplane manufacturers in the world. Uh, they do have a lo location in Spain. It's in Cordoba. They have their own private runway that they use there. It's actually a public runway, but they're really the only ones that utilize it there. So. Great facility, about 30 employees there. Uh, okay. They can produce quite a few machines out of there. The Eclipse, they can do one every four days. That's the um, one we're sitting in here. That's the, the one uh, we're the sitting e in currently. It was uh, called the E10 or ELA10, yes. I guess. Yep. But yep. The Eclipse is the memorable name yes. of it. Yes, yes, exactly. The Eclipse 10 is what we're sitting in currently. Uh, they also have the other models as well. They have a Tandem Open, uh, two of them actually, the 07S and the 07. And then they make a junior, which is a one plus one, it's called. So I'm looking to get a junior here because I think it's a it's a nice, more or less single place. It's a kind it, of a single place aircraft exactly. that you can yep. kind of cram another person into if exactly. you have to. Exactly. Huh? Yep. Very nice and light and the lower cost as well. Well, I've kind of, a, I, I sort of like single place aircraft because, you know, if you don't have anybody else to make sure they're happy or <laughs> enjoying themselves, then you can just enjoy yourself. Exactly. Very exactly. well. Of course, you can fly this airplane with not a second person in it but it anyway well. so the one we're sitting in is, yep. is kind of the fully enclosed <laughs> model you have a not enclosed model an open cockpit model as well but well, this actually, one attracted my attention just because it's so smoothly achieved and yes it's, got a it's beautiful interior and it's very very streamlined actually this comes with the canopy and with the with the windshield so we can fly it either, ah okay so you got way. a summer version of this this canopy up here let's yep. let's bring this down just for a moment so people can see it and then we'll go right back up and they can still hear us very well in here, but yeah. I want to observe, I'm kind of putting my hand above my hat here that you can't yeah. see, but I've probably got, oh, five or, five or more inches in there above my head. I'm about average height, so they can see me very, or you, you could accommodate a, quite a large person back here. Yeah, it's actually, wide this, and it's comfortable. this has a lot of room in it. Yeah, you, you could eat a couple more hamburgers than I've eaten and still fit back here pretty well, <laughs> Absolutely, I think. absolutely. And it's a huge visibility, but you've got an opaque uh, finish to the interior of the canopy <laughs> here that would keep the hot sun right off your head. Yep. That, which you're going to enjoy down here in Sebring, Florida. Definitely works well that way. But, yep. so what we're in now is a fully enclosed tandem, but yep. you've also got a windscreen. Yes, yep, actually. That you could take... 
how hard is it to get this canopy off? Chris? It's about five minutes. It's two That's screws it? on the left, and then that shock absorber uh, right oh, on yeah, the left yeah. side. Right so. to my, my uh, over my left shoulder here. Yep, we pop so those off, and then it's five screws to put the windshield on. So typically about 10 minutes total to put it on. And, wow, cool. Uh, so you can go both on. ways with this one then? Yep, absolutely. You'll be wanting to use some of that down here in Florida oh, in the warm yes. months. You'll want it wide open, but uh, you know, some days are a little yep. cooler. Or when you're going cross country, I presume it'd be nice Absolutely. to have the full enclosure. Absolutely. Yep. Okay, you can bring it back up again now. Get the air conditioning going again for us here. There we go. I'll help you with it. But yeah, so that's beautiful. Uh, um, tell me a little bit about how this, uh, well, let's go a little bit into your background so we establish some credibility for everyone. Sure. What's sure. your gyro background, Chris? Well, my gyroplane background, I started about five years ago, um, but I but I have flown quite a bit. I fly about 800 hours a year wow. and a couple hundred hours in fixed wing a year, so a lot of time in the air. Um, gyroplanes, I've flown 24 yeah. different models. Yeah, that's a now. lot of hours. Most it's, pilots can appreciate it's that. It's a lot of hours. It, it definitely helps with comfortable seats. So uh, I'm a CFI commercial and I'm also an examiner to the highest level. I have the contract to train the FAA in gyroplanes. I've been doing huh? that for four years now. Have you now? Okay, and that's cool. And I was cool. a test pilot for Carter Copter and I've also flown the other jump takeoff, the air and space and a few other gyros as well. Oh wow, okay, so there's some real solid credentials. Uh, the Carter Copter, if people don't know what that is, a very sort of high-end experimental thing that was going real fast and whatnot that very you have much. done some flying in that by itself should suggest you probably know what's going on with this spinny wing thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I'm almost getting there where I figured out. <laughs> almost. So, so describe for us a little bit. We've done a few videos on gyros before, but a lot of folks are looking with great intrigue at these, but kind of go, well, you know, I've flown fixed wing my whole life. It's, the wing goes around in circles here. I'm sure it's like flying a helicopter or something. I don't know if I can do that. I know what they're saying because I felt that way myself. My experience at flying one was well, not that, not that way at all. But Certainly. tell me from a professional's view, what it's like to make the transition. Certainly, well, the biggest thing that people uh, ask, the rotor is actually non-powered. So it's kind of like a maple seed, as it goes through the air, it spins itself up. This rotor, we have a pre-rotation system on this model that'll spin to 300 rotor RPM. After we spin that high, we completely disengage we're dragging the rotor through the air, and the rotor will spin whatever it needs to spin to lift whatever it needs to lift. After that, we're in complete auto rotation from the second we leave the ground uh, until the second we land. Uh, so with that, Vegas, we can do some things that other aircraft can't. We actually that don't have a stall, a because if we have altitude, we can descend, we still have air going through the rotor the like a parachute, uh -huh. or if we're moving still forward, air is still going through the rotor. So regardless of what we do, we can stop, we can back up, we can vertically descend, we can go forward. We can cruise in this guy about 115 to 120 miles an hour. So Is that right? Relatively That's fast. That's a pretty fast guy. cruise. Yeah, Very most people so. think these are kind of slow. Yeah, this guy, I've actually done some cross countries, flew it from Illinois down to West Palm Beach down here. Uh, brought it to Sebring, and I just sold it to a guy in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So a lot of <laughs> so you're going to get some flying in this guy. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. You, let's say a thousand-hour fixed-wing pilot, uh, ready to learn, but experienced only in fixed-wing, comes to you and says, "What's it going to take me to learn how to fly this thing, Chris? What would you tell them?" Most of the people, uh, depending on their skills, most of them can transition in about 10 hours to the sport pilot level. Okay. The biggest transition is our rotor. So until our rotor is creating lift we don't have a wing. That's the biggest difference for that. Flying, they do quite well. They don't understand that we don't have a stall, so zero airspeed is, you know, that's a that's a tummy tickler it right there. It seems fearsome, but it's exactly, not but so fearsome. Once they understand we're able to do that, not a big deal at all. For the sport pilot level, it's a very easy transition, typically 10 hours again, and then a second CFI can do the proficiency check ride. Okay. So not even the need of an examiner like myself. All right, so you're going to do that right down here. You're going to sell the product out, out of here, I understand. Absolutely, out of this but training airport is, wrong, but is you're going to do training as well. as well. Absolutely. Okay, so yep. it's a nice place to come. You know, most of the year it says weather that the rest of the country envies. Yeah. And you can operate all year long here. Yep. Uh, you'll probably want to be use some summer windscreen in those hotter <laughs> months, but uh, you've got that as well. So people can come down here and get training from you. Yeah. Uh, you go to shows and whatnot. How often are you going to be able to do training? Uh, all the time, actually. So we have you a got team some other of instructors. And yep, stuff. yep. We're bringing up some new instructors as well. Uh, but we have food on site here. Great restaurant. We have a hotel on site. So everything is kind of surrounding this area. 
And in uh, 10 hours, you, you could knock that off in, well, a week pretty easily, I'm thinking. Yeah. Assuming weather cooperates, but it yes. usually does here. So yeah. somebody could come spend a week, uh, bring the family if they want, and they can go do with things in town or go up to Disney or whatever they like. And uh, absolutely. And meanwhile, uh, whoever's the pilot can just go forward and do it. Yeah. All right, great stuff. So let's uh, come back to the aircraft itself for just a little okay. bit. If I said, gosh, I'm convinced, I want the training, I want the aircraft, I want the whole deal. How long would it take if I said, I love this, uh, this uh, E-10 Eclipse, how long does it take me to get one? The factory can produce one every four days, but we get them shipped over in a container. Most of the orders we can get fulfilled to Sebring here in about 10 weeks. So you get to pick the color, you get to pick the interior. Uh, the Eclipse, I completely deck out, so it's going to have the turbo engine, all the bells and whistles. Oh, the 9, 914 Rotex 914. turbo? Okay. Yes, sir. Um, so with that, you get that kit over here. It usually takes about 10 days to do the full kit build for 51%. Okay. Have the uh, airworthiness inspection here as well, and then you can start flying off your 40 hours. All right, cool. Uh, Price-wise, uh, it ranges anywhere from 100 to 105, depending on the GPS and And that's for avionics. the deluxe model we're talking correct, about. Correct, correct. Okay, and if somebody says, well, okay, that's great, that's beautiful, but I, that's not my wallet, so yep. we uh, have the what other options you've got? That's the, the entry model. That's in the 45 range. Oh, wow. Uh, the other ones are in the 50 to 60, and then 70 and 80, and then up to the top on this guy. All right, so 40 to a shade over 100. you got yep. something in there that most people could find something they could afford and like. Absolutely, that's the goal. All right, a couple more questions, and then I'm going to ask for that web address. I'm looking sure. over your shoulder. I see uh, MGL Avionics, which is a company we know and like very yep. much here, and uh, you're using a um, uh, just a, a digital device in the middle. Yeah, it's actually a Canardia, um, it's called. So it is a full-functioning engine monitor, and it also it's a fuel computer as well. So it's a fuel calculator, does all the engine information system, and it also totalizes your fuel and tells your fuel burn at the power setting. Now, as I'm looking at that one in the center, you know, there's a word there, rotor, that you just don't see in most <laughs> aircraft. So yep. that's just telling you about your rotor speed, I'm, yeah, I'm assuming? Yeah, it's, it's actually our rotor RPM, but really the only time we look at that is for pre-rotation ah. to see how many RPM we're at. Because after that, it's setting itself. Yeah, exactly. We have a large, large range. Unlike helicopters, it'll spin anywhere from 300 up to 600, and anywhere in between is fine. Okay, cool. All right, well, let's uh, let's touch base on a uh, web address so that uh, we can find you there and Certainly. ask more questions that we didn't get to cover here, yep. and uh, maybe just contact you and order one up. Sounds great. The web address is gyroplaneguy.com. Okay, pretty simple. Yep. That's easy to remember. <laughs> yeah. We won't worry about that complicated other company name because yes. gyroplaneguy.com will do it. All right. You can find more about the ELA and, and several other aircraft that you might find of interest, all in the affordable aviation range. That's on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Chris Lord and myself here at Sebring.